Hello, I'm Maria here from uh, Embedded Downloads. Uh, I'm here today to do an introduction keynote on uh, the world's first uh, blockchain crypto communicator, the BitVault. So um, I'm just going to run through a couple of slides to show you all a bit more about uh, what the BitVault is all about. So I'll just get started. So first of all, just a quick introduction on, on what the BitVault is. So um, the BitVault is a revolutionary new product built around security and privacy enabled through blockchain technology. And it's the world's first blockchain phone, uh, crypto communicator and digital banking device. So some of the potential use cases for this device, um, financial technologies and institutions, uh, government agencies uh, like defense forces and police forces, logistics, uh, insurance companies, uh, enterprise solutions where uh, typically anybody would need a closed communications network that uh, they want to keep secure. Uh, medical industries is another uh, interesting topic. Uh, so imagine for uh, a minute a doctor wanting to communicate uh, to the hospital uh, about a specific patient, uh, he would need to be able to send very confidential information uh, between the doctor and the actual the rest of the team. So this can be uh, easily done by using the bit vault in this scenario where you want to securely transfer documents or securely discuss patient confidential information. Um, typically where you also need access control to specific uh, areas uh, the biometrics that I'll get into a, in a minute uh, would be very interesting for, uh, for this device to be used as an access control. So the visuals of the bit vault, that's just a couple of pictures of what the actual device looks like. Um, those are two developer editions and I'll get into the differences between the devices in a minute. How do we get um, the privacy and security levels on this device? So. We have to, uh, developed uh, the hardware here to have multiple levels of authentication when using the device. So the first one would be iris recognition. So basically scanning your, your, your iris, um, which is unique to, to you as an individual. And then the second, um, the second one would be the, the fingerprint detection, um, as well as a, a third method of authentication which we implemented, which is an NFC card reader. So using those three methods of authentication, we basically have implemented a way for the device to be uniquely linked to you as an individual. So there's a lot of benefits for doing that in uh, a lot of the uh, use cases that I've mentioned earlier. So on the side of the device, then we also have a um, security key. When you remove the security key, um, the device will no longer uh, be uh, functioning. So basically what you need to do is, in order for the device to function, you need to keep your security key in, in, inside the device. Um, we've uh, implemented a way of dynamically generating encryption keys um, through your biometrics and some hardware aspects inside the device. So basically using your biometrics along with some of the hardware aspects in the device, we've come up with a way of um, dynamically generating the keys used for encryption. So um, these keys are never stored. So even if somebody does get access to your device, which is kind of unlikely, um, they would still not be able to get to your private keys because they are dynamically generated every time. On the device as well, there is a, a USB port. This USB port is actually not active on the, um, the normal devices. It will be active on the developer edition, but on the normal devices, it's only used for charging. So this is to allow um, a very secure device where no data can actually be uploaded to the device. So you cannot actually transfer any documents onto your bit vault. Uh, so this is, this is a security feature and we'll, we'll get into that in a, in a bit more detail. Um, we've also got no third party access 
to any of the applications. So we've removed all services that actually uh, track you or send data to the cloud. So all of these um, services has been removed from the device for security purposes. So just a little bit more on the bit vault and uh, the hardware that's used. So um, we have a 5.5 inch touchscreen. Um, there is a Qualcomm processor, a 64 bit 2 gigahertz uh, processor inside. Um, we're using uh, 4 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of flash. The, the front facing camera is 8 megapixels and the back facing camera is 30 megapixels. Uh, then on the front we also have the iris scanner. Um, we have the fingerprint scanner and um, there's also obviously a slot for your SIM card uh, to put that into and then the, the card for the uh, secure SD card that I mentioned before as well. So moving along and looking a little bit more into the actual applications on the device. So um, we have uh, several applications already built in which is your typical calendar, camera, clock, calculator, contacts and uh, you know, sound recorder. But these applications have been modified in the sense that there's no access to, um, to take these and sync them to any cloud-based or, or internet-based solution. So um, some of the more interesting applications that we have uh, developed uh, would be the, the Bitcoin Vault, um, the EOT Coin Vault, uh, secure calling, secure messaging, secure browsing, a media vault and then as well a bit vault specific uh, application store for blockchain applications. So talking about uh, the Bitcoin vault and uh, you know the safe uh, storage of your, your Bitcoins, uh, one of the key problems in cryptocurrencies today is how do you actually store your private key and keep people that want to steal your bitcoins away from uh, getting to that private key. So um, the way that we've um, implemented this is by using dynamic key generation. So the key is actually never stored on the device. So and based on your biometrics only you would be able to actually access your funds. We also have a way of storing your EOT coins securely with the EOT coin vault. So EOT is your encryption of things coin used for uh, many different uh, IoT applications. So a, a vault really here for, for keeping these coins safe as well. And again, similarly, your private keys are being dynamically generated every time. Moving on then to talk about a uh, secure calling. So with secure calling, um, we are basically um, using public and pri private key cryptography similarly to the, to the cryptocurrency transactions to, to enable um, multi-layer security. So what this device enables you to do is both encrypted voice and video calling. We also have encrypted conference calling. What we have here as well is a way of having verified calling in knowing who is actually calling you. Because only a person with a bit vault can actually call you on a bit vault. So, and the, the person on the other end will have the same verification methods to be able to initiate the call. So similarly, we also have an application for secure messaging. So for secure messaging, um, we are using a, um, again, a crypto, cryptographic uh, pair of keys. So um, you can kind of see that. So if I want to send you a secure message on your bit vault, what you need to provide to me is your public key of your EOT wallet. So you can kind of see your EOT wallet as your phone number. So in order to in initiate this, uh, this um, secure message, the first thing that happens is a small EOT transaction um, happens between the two parties, which will open up the communications channel and then the actual message is sent across a private blockchain. Once the message is delivered on the other side, um, the, the actual, um, all trace of the message is actually deleted. So only the person that have sent the message and have received the message can actually have access to the message 
through the use of their biometrics. So um, this allows you to do uh, several things, you know, send encrypted messages and media attachments from Bitvault to Bitvault or from a Bitvault to a PC. Uh, what we also allow is through the use of your Bitvault, you can open up a communications channel between two PCs without the actual document ever transferring through your Bitvault. So this is just a good look of, of what the secure uh, document transfer application looks like on the PC. So what we have is we've enabled multi layers of encryption while sending attachments over this uh, private blockchain. Um, so the first step that needs to happen is the bit fault needs to be paired to the specific desktop application and you need to be able to send and receive secure encrypted documents um, from the desktop to desktop type um, implementation. You can also send and receive secure encrypted documents from the bit vault to the desktop. So if you have, for instance, taken a picture on your bit vault of something that is secure, then you have a way of transferring it back to your PC through this application. And similarly, if you potentially have a very valuable document that needs to be transferred, and you don't want anybody else to be able to see this document, then what you can do is you can send it from PC to PC using the bit vault. We also have an app for uh, a, which we call a secure media vault. So what this enables you to do is um, again, um, store your uh, photos, documents or audio files or videos securely on a blockchain. So again, we're using the same multi layers of encryption to be able to upload these documents to this uh, private blockchain. Once um, the documents have been um, uploaded to the, to the actual private blockchain, only you can retrieve those documents because it's based on you as a person and, and your biometrics is used to actually de uh, decrypt those uh, those documents or videos or audio files. We also have a secure application store. So in order to be able to uh, load a new application onto the bit vault, um, we have implemented a, new, a unique application store. So you cannot upload any other mobile phone application directly onto this device. Um, and this is done for security reasons. The only way that you can get a new application onto the device is through the BitVault application store. So this allows us to um, have a very closed and um, secure environment for applications because now no, no um, third party application can run on it without it actually being submitted through the, uh, the BitVault application store. So this allows um, you know, for very unique blockchain applications that could be made available on the, on the Bitfall. And um, we have some uh, future app developments in progress as well. Um, and uh, obviously any software upgrades that you would need to do will also go through the secure application store. So just a note for developers, you know, um, if you want to develop an application for uh, the Bitvault, um, we have a developer console and a Bitfall developer website where uh, you can get more information on how we go about uh, developing an app for the Bitfall. So this is um, just a quick look of what this uh, Bitfall uh, developer uh, console looks like. So it allows you a way of distributing applications um, to the Bitfall. So the Bitvault provides a unique opportunity for developers to develop their applications for the world's first blockchain smartphone. The Bitvault's operating system is secured um, you know, using a version of Android. So you cannot upload a normal Android application, but there are certain things that you can do to port an Android application to the Bitvault. So you would need to um, download an SDK um, to develop these secure applications and um, 
you know, no standard Android application can actually run on the device. Uh, for more information, please visit www.bitvault. The Bitvault provides a unique opportunity for developers to develop their applications for the world's first blockchain smartphone. The Bitvault's operating system is secured, um, you know, using a version of Android. So you cannot upload a normal Android application, but there are certain things that you can do to port an Android application to the Bitvault. So you would need to um, download an SDK um, to develop these secure applications. And um, you know, no standard Android application can actually run on the device. Uh, for more information, please visit www.bitvault.com.